On January 7, 2025, at 10.26 p.m. California time, seismic activity captured global attention with a magnitude 3.3 earthquake near the Puerto Rico Trench, just off the coast of Puerto Rico. This region, known for its tectonic complexity, experienced a notable tremor amidst a relatively calm period, signaling the ongoing dynamic interactions beneath the surface. Focusing on the west coast, a series of smaller earthquakes occurred near Petrolia, California, at the southern edge of the Cascadia subduction zone. These included magnitudes in the 2.0 range and a deeper 1.9 quake, approximately 19 miles below the surface. While deeper quakes in this area are rare, their occurrence on the Pacific side of the plate boundary adds to the intrigue of the region's seismic behavior. Tremor activity in Cascadia has been minimal, with only six to eight small events recorded, marking a significant decline in activity over the past few weeks. However, subtle shifts in the region's tectonic processes remain under observation. Elsewhere in Northern California, activity at the Clear Lake Volcanic Field continues to align with the geothermal operations in the area. This location, known for its frequent low-magnitude tremors, remains a hotspot of scientific interest. In contrast, Southern California, while relatively quiet in terms of seismic events, faces another crisis, devastating wildfires. These fires, some of the worst in recent years, are ravaging the region under extreme weather conditions, presenting a stark reminder of nature's dual threats. Moving inland, Wyoming experienced a shallow crustal earthquake near the Wyoming Range, not far from Little America. This minor tremor occurred at an unusually shallow depth, classified as negative, indicating activity near the surface. The area is sparsely populated, with only a small community and some operations visible nearby, possibly related to wastewater management. These surface-level quakes, though rare, provide an intriguing look at the geological forces shaping the region. The recent seismic events raise intriguing questions about the forces at play beneath the Earth's surface. In one area, earthquakes have been recorded in a region not clearly associated with known fault lines, leading to speculation about potential geothermal activity. However, without visible indicators, such as geothermal plants, the precise cause remains uncertain, adding an element of mystery to this unusual seismic behavior. At Yellowstone National Park, the seismic situation appears relatively calm, though subtle tremors have been detected on various seismographs. While these signals suggest potential deep earthquake activity, no corresponding events are reported by the USGS, leaving their origin unclear. The possibility exists that these readings represent deep or distant seismic events not fully captured by surface-level monitoring stations. Alternatively, they could stem from activity outside Yellowstone's boundaries, eluding traditional reporting systems. Further afield, the central United States continues to experience tremors linked to oil field operations, particularly in Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. These anthropogenic earthquakes are a well-documented consequence of energy extraction, underscoring the environmental trade-offs of such industries. Meanwhile, the eastern U.S. remains largely seismically quiet. Globally, seismic activity has concentrated around the Puerto Rico region, where a magnitude 3.3 quake struck southeast of San Juan, near the Virgin Islands. This area, known for its tectonic complexity, has been the site of numerous events, contributing to the broader seismic narrative of the day. Other regions have also seen notable activity, including the East African Rift in Ethiopia, which has recently experienced a series of tremors. The seismic story continued in Nepal, where a significant magnitude 7.0 earthquake set off a cascade of aftershocks. This region remains highly active, with ongoing aftershock sequences of varying magnitudes, a typical response to such a powerful initial event. Surprisingly, no larger secondary quakes, such as a magnitude 6.0 or higher, have followed, though this possibility cannot yet be ruled out. Recent seismic activity in the Ethiopia Rift region has been particularly intriguing, 
with aftershocks continuing to ripple through the area. Among these, a magnitude 5.1 earthquake marked one of the most significant events, accompanied by additional tremors, including a magnitude 5.3 recorded about six miles beneath the surface. This activity signals ongoing movement along the rift boundary, raising questions about potential larger-scale tectonic changes in the region. Seismograph stations positioned near the boundary confirm a steady increase in smaller quakes over the past 24 hours, suggesting heightened activity that warrants close observation. In the Indian Ocean, moderate earthquakes have been detected, while eastern Turkey recorded a magnitude 4.5 event. These movements, although not extraordinary, add to the mosaic of seismic patterns globally. Meanwhile, in the Indonesian archipelago, the usual background of tectonic activity persists, with frequent quakes in the magnitude 4.0 to 5.0 range reflecting the region's position along the Pacific Ring of Fire. In Japan, the Izu Trench experienced two deep earthquakes earlier in the day, registering magnitudes of 5.6 and 5.3. These events, which occurred deep within the subduction zone, typically lead to subsequent adjustments in the surrounding crust. However, no significant follow-up activity has been observed, an anomaly that adds a layer of uncertainty to the region's seismic dynamics. Alaska, another prominent subduction zone, has reported low-magnitude events in the 2.0 to 3.0 range, consistent with its usual seismic activity. Similarly, the Big Island of Hawaii has seen minor tremors near Kalawea Volcano. Observations from summit webcams reveal subtle activity along the crater walls, potentially indicating minor changes in volcanic conditions. While it does not appear that a new eruption has resumed, the observed movement suggests ongoing activity within the system. The most recent updates highlight increasing activity at Kalawea Volcano. Observations from earlier in the day show possible outflow from the crater area. Tilt meter data reveals fluctuating deformation at the summit, with inflation steadily increasing since the pause in the eruption on January 4. This trend suggests the potential for eruptive activity to resume, as hinted by visible signs on the summit webcams. Further south, regions such as the Middle America Trench and the Peru-Chile Trench continue to exhibit routine seismicity with frequent earthquakes in the magnitude 3.0 to 4.0 range. These lengthy subduction zones are almost constantly active as their tectonic processes release accumulated stress through smaller, daily tremors. While these patterns might appear alarming when visualized over a 24-hour period, they are typical for these geologically dynamic areas. Iceland has seen a surprising surge in seismicity including a shallow magnitude 4.0 earthquake near a rift boundary. This event, occurring away from the commonly active areas like Grimsvotn volcano, has drawn attention to increased activity across both western and central parts of the region. Although no significant updates have been issued regarding Bardarbunga volcano, the unusual seismic activity points to heightened geological movement in Iceland's volcanic and tectonic systems. In East Africa, the Ethiopia Rift Zone remains a focal point of interest. The ongoing activity hints at a buildup of stress that could potentially lead to a larger event. Meanwhile, minor solar flare activity earlier in the day reached the threshold of a C-class event, underscoring the interconnectedness of Earth's geophysical systems and external influences from space. As 2025 unfolds, these early events suggest a year of heightened geological and solar activity. The dynamic processes observed across multiple regions are a reminder of the Earth's ever-changing nature and the importance of close monitoring to understand and anticipate its impacts. Current solar activity indicates a flare developing in the M-class range, originating from a prominent sunspot. While precise data lags by approximately 15 minutes, Ongoing monitoring confirms that the flare is intensifying. This is evident on the global D-layer absorption map, which highlights areas where radio communication disruptions may occur due to strong solar flares. Although the current flare is not exceptionally powerful, its progression into the M-class category 
serves as a reminder of the Sun's dynamic and unpredictable nature. These solar events, while a natural aspect of the Sun's activity, can have significant impacts on Earth, especially on communication and navigation systems, making continuous observation essential. Recent observations reveal no major solar storms currently in the forecast. However, Sunspot 3947 remains directly aligned with the Earth-Sun plane, drawing attention due to its uncertain complexity and potential for further activity. Preliminary data suggests a minor solar flare may have occurred, but confirmation requires additional monitoring. Shifting to terrestrial weather, Southern California is experiencing significant wind events due to a developing low-pressure system over southwestern Arizona. This system, interacting with a high-pressure zone to the north, creates a strong pressure gradient, driving powerful winds. This dynamic setup also holds the potential to bring snowfall to northern Texas, particularly near the Dallas-Fort Worth area, or alternatively, heavy cold rain, depending on how the system evolves. Severe weather risks remain possible farther south. Or farther. Looking at long-term weather patterns, the anticipated wet winter for the western United States appears uncertain. Despite a promising start in December with substantial rainfall in Northern California and along the West Coast, January has so far been drier than expected. Emerging models suggest the potential for moisture inflow from the Gulf of Mexico, but significant precipitation for California remains speculative. The coming weeks will reveal whether this winter fulfills its earlier forecasts of abundant rain and snow. As for solar activity, Recent data indicates a slight uptick, with a solar flare briefly reaching the M-Class category. This event likely originated from Sunspot 3947, although no distinct features definitively confirm its source. Continued monitoring of solar and atmospheric conditions remains crucial as the patterns evolve. Southern California is facing a devastating crisis as wildfires rage across the Los Angeles region particularly near Malibu. Strong winds, reaching up to 61 miles per hour in areas north of Los Angeles, are exacerbating the situation. These fires are creating their own weather systems, intensifying the already dangerous conditions. Gusts as high as 41 miles per hour have been recorded near Malibu, and reports suggest that wind speeds could climb even higher, making this one of the most severe fire weather events in recent history. Winds of 70 to 80 miles per hour are possible, posing immense challenges for firefighters and residents in the affected areas. One of the major fires has already consumed nearly 3,000 acres as of the most recent updates, though the actual extent may now exceed 4,000 acres. This fire, which is threatening luxury homes and affluent neighborhoods near Malibu, has left many residents in fear as flames encroach upon their properties. Dramatic footage on social media captures the harrowing scenes of homes engulfed in flames, with neighboring houses at risk. The fire perimeter is rapidly expanding, fueled by dry vegetation and relentless winds. The wind patterns are currently pushing the fire toward the ocean, but there is growing concern that it could spread further into Malibu, an area already scarred by previous wildfires. The densely packed and extremely dry vegetation in the region serves as a perfect fuel source, heightening the risk of the fire's rapid growth. Mandatory evacuations are underway as authorities work to safeguard lives and property in the path of destruction. Efforts to contain the blaze are ongoing, but the combination of dry conditions, strong winds, and highly flammable terrain makes it a formidable challenge. The forecast suggests that wind activity might ease after Wednesday, offering a glimmer of hope for firefighting teams. However, for now, Southern California remains in the grip of a catastrophic fire event, with the safety of countless residents hanging in the balance. Another significant wildfire, known as the Eaton Fire, has ignited outside Pasadena, intensifying the ongoing crisis in Southern California. This blaze is rapidly growing and poses a severe threat, particularly with strong winds directing the flames toward densely populated areas in Los Angeles and Pasadena. 
covering approximately 400 acres as of the latest reports, this fire is evolving into a worst-case scenario for the region. A fire perimeter has yet to be established, further complicating containment efforts. Webcams provide real-time visuals of the devastation. Some images reveal apocalyptic scenes of flames consuming the landscape, with numerous homes already lost to the inferno. Some webcams have recorded the rapid and relentless advance of the fire, underscoring how quickly it can overtake dry terrain. Despite the intensity of the blaze, some cameras continue to function, offering an unfiltered view of the destruction. Southern California is grappling with one of its driest winters on record, with rainfall largely concentrated north of Stockton. This prolonged dryness has created conditions ripe for wildfires to ignite and spread uncontrollably. Unfortunately, the winds are expected to strengthen overnight, raising concerns that the fire's reach will expand even further. Amidst the chaos, solar activity adds another layer of intrigue to the day's events. Sunspot 3947 is likely the source of a minor C-class solar flare observed recently. While this solar activity poses no immediate danger, it serves as a reminder of the many dynamic processes unfolding simultaneously on Earth and beyond. Seismographic readings across the globe reveal elevated activity in some regions, with clusters of moderate earthquakes, mostly in the magnitude 4 range, occurring in tectonically active areas. While these seismic events remain within expected patterns, they highlight the planet's persistent and unpredictable natural forces. With Southern California in the grip of this escalating disaster, communities are urged to remain vigilant and prioritize safety. The situation is dire, and the combination of extreme dryness, strong winds, and volatile weather conditions creates a challenging environment for those battling the flames and for residents trying to protect their lives and homes. Lastly, Early this morning, a magnitude 5.0 earthquake struck, highlighting the dynamic nature of seismic activity in the region. The specific location of the next significant event remains uncertain, but the conditions in the area are laden with potential for larger disturbances. The deeper seismic activity along the Izu Trench, in particular, raises concerns about what might come next. These deep earthquakes suggest that substantial strain has been accumulating in this tectonic region for an extended period. Such prolonged stress increases the likelihood of larger, more impactful events in the future. The area remains under close observation, with geologists and seismologists analyzing data to anticipate possible developments. Lastly, let's explore this shallow versus deep earthquakes, which poses a greater threat. The potential threat posed by an earthquake, whether it originates deep beneath the Earth's surface or at shallower depths, is influenced by several key factors, including the earthquake's depth, magnitude, proximity to densely populated regions, and the geological characteristics of the area. The distinctions between shallow and deep earthquakes reveal the diverse ways these phenomena can impact the planet and its inhabitants. Shallow earthquakes, occurring at depths of 0 to 70 kilometers, 0 to 43 miles, unleash their energy close to the Earth's surface. Until next time, stay safe and keep your eyes on the ground.